This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. It is a doubleheader night for Monday Night Football. We have got the Titans at the Bills. We have got the Vikings at the Eagles. We're going to break down both those games, get you set for what should be a fantastic night of Monday Night Football from a betting perspective. Welcome on into Covering the Spread. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for numberfire.com joined here as i am each monday by ryan williams check him out on twitter at ryan alexander underscore w ryan got a question for you now when we were talking on yesterday on last week's show i have you down as six bets that you felt good about on the slate how many of those do you think you got right if you had to guess just throw out a guess there throw out a guess oh five out of six no six for six you six were, for six. You were six for six. <laughs> um, we're gonna do like the full recap tomorrow on the show. But um, you, I had you down for Buck Saints under that easily hit. Love that. Um, yep. Commanders Lions over. Jags plus four and a half. They won the dang game. That was beautiful. Uh, Packers minus minus nine and a half. Condolences on that one. Sorry about your Bears. Uh, wow. Patriots minus two and a half. Chargers plus four and a half. So. We talked last week about how like we shouldn't set expectations too high for you, but you keep doing this, and I feel like I have no choice but to set those expectations higher. Good things happen in threes, Jim. So uh, right. we're you know we're going to see what what week three brings us. But uh, but no, I mean it's been a fun start to the year. I think you know especially like w- what I do as far as research goes and everything. I mean I'm not you know you're we're gonna have losing weeks right so yeah, I'm, sure. I'm just trying to tr- trying to ride the wave and we're trying to find value uh in every way that we can and and you know things were just shaping up like we talked about it being an ugly slate of games and kind of just like we really have to dig deep into the numbers and kind of see what was you know what what, what was sticking out to us and I, just looking at those games and you know hindsight's always twenty twenty, but I, I just felt like we had we had pretty good reads on, on everything that we were talking through on that day. So, and, and, you know, we're playing with house money now, as we like to say over here, Jim. <laughs> so we're just going to ride the wave and, and see how it happens. But we got this two gamer, two gamer that we're going to break down for the Monday night slate tonight. And we're hoping to bring back some good dividends to the people on this one. Yeah. And I like that you're keeping level head because it's always important with betting. You never want to get too high coming off a good, a good week. Never want to chase losses, never do any, anything like that. Right. But it sounds like uh, we are in a good headspace heading into this double header for Monday night football. What we'll do for today is break down both those games. The Titans, the bills first Vikings at Eagles. Second, we'll talk about traditional markets and player props to get you set for both of those games. First, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to covering the spread tomorrow. We'll do the full recap of this past week for both college and NFL. We'll do that uh, here at the, end of the show i'll also take my first look at week number three in the nfl side of things brandon gadula is going to talk some golf tomorrow and of course pitching ninja rob friedman will sing by talk about some uh some strikeout props as well to get that in every podcast as they are posted make sure you are subscribed to the covering the spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts and while you're there if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. FanDuel is an all-new mobile gaming app called FanDuel Faceoff. FanDuel Faceoff is where you compete in quick, fun games against other real people for real cash. It has all sorts of games you're familiar with, like Home Run Derby, Wheel of Fortune, puzzle and strategy games, and more on the way, including Pat McAfee's kicking game. Contests are action-packed and last between two to five minutes, so you can play on your couch, waiting in line, and during a commercial break, wherever and on your schedule, plus... You can practice for free anytime, whether it be head-to-head, multiplayer, or larger tournaments. FanDuel Faceoff has something for you. Plus, in most contests, matched up against players of similar skill levels, so you're never totally overmatched. Even as a beginner, FanDuel Faceoff is tied to your FanDuel account and wallet, so you can easily use your daily fantasy funds or sportsbook winnings in the app. Visit FanDuel.com slash Faceoff or download the FanDuel Faceoff app in the Apple App Store today to get in the game. Age and location restrictions apply. Void rope prohibited. See FanDuel.com slash faceoff dash terms for terms and conditions. Let's dive in now to the first game on tonight's slate. That is the Titans of the Bills right now. The Bills are a 10-point favorite total for this game. Is up at 47 and a half. Don't appear to be any big issues in this game from a weather perspective. But, Ryan, we do have a question mark around Gabriel Davis. Let's talk about that later on. But I want to get your overall impressions of this game first of all 
can the Titans keep things close? I think that's kind of the key dis- deciding thing, it, determining how we view this game overall. Yeah, so I think, I mean, anytime you're looking at Bravel, uh, or Bravel, Bravel and his numbers <laughs> uh, as an underdog, uh, we got we got to love that. Um, you're looking at his numbers, uh, I believe, 18 and 6 um, against the spread as a three point or as a three point or more underdog, um, 18 and 11 in general since he's been uh, with the Titans as an underdog. So we always love those numbers for Bravel. When you're looking at this matchup with Tennessee and Buffalo, um, they've actually won uh, the past two matchups. Uh, under Vrabel now I believe those games were both in Tennessee not in Buffalo and you know AJ Brown was around uh and not in Philly (laughs) so you know that that kind of makes it tough but we're looking at a 10 point spread here um we know there's going to be two things that the Titans want to do in this game and that's pretty much keep Josh Allen Josh Allen off of the field and run the ball with Derrick Henry those two, two things coincide so I think if they can get Derrick Henry you know if they can establish the run early and kind of you know their defense comes out here and can contain Josh Allen and keep it off the field. They do not want to get into a shootout with this team. So they just have to play contain and and run the ball. And, and I think that 10, 10 points here is a, is a little too high. You can see that the public um, is really favoring the Buffalo side here um, heavily. I believe 70% or more of the money is coming in on the Buffalo side on the spread, um, which always makes me weary. So I'm, I'm happy to get those 10 points with the Titans, just knowing, um, you know, the coaching pedigree that they're they're dealing with and still having Derrick Henry, which he's had five touchdowns in this matchup uh, the past two games as well. So he, he loves playing against this Buffalo team. Um, and we know that how good their secondary is and kind of how they play and they contain the pass anyway. Um, so it's a good matchup for what Tennessee likes to do, I think. I think yeah. I feel like. My numbers agree with you. Uh, I have this as uh, the Bills by 6.4. Now, that's that's within the threshold where I would bet it typically. I just get really, really nervous. I'm not going to here personally. Uh, my numbers do go the same direction as you do, where this is a, a spread that's probably a bit bigger than it should be. And honestly, it's no shock that people are pretty enthusiastic about this Bills team based on what they did in week one against the Rams, Titans, obviously didn't play their best game uh, in week one as well. So I understand why the line is where it is. I think that my biggest takeaway is I can't bet the bills. I can't bet the bills money line. I think there is no value there. That is all gone. I think to me, it's just like a, I don't want to do this to myself kind of thing. Like I don't want to be sitting on the couch Monday. Well, this game starts like seven 30. So or seven, seven 15. So I don't I want to be sitting there at like seven 45. Like, Oh boy, Josh Allen's already up two touchdowns and I'm just right. being miserable the rest of the night. So it's a stay away from me, but my numbers do agree with you where there is value on the Titan side of things at plus 10. I just can't quite get there. Any read for you on the total in this game at 47 and a half? I think that's another one where I'm not super enthusiastic. I would lean under, but don't really have a, a hard, a hard lead either way. Yeah, I, d- I don't either. So contrary to everything that I just said, Jim, uh, I actually do kind of like the over. Um, yeah. I think that, it, you know, it opened at 51. It's been bet down significantly. We got 47 and a half, I believe, currently on the FanDuel Sportsbook. And Gabe Davis being questionable, I mean, maybe that moves it by the hook. Maybe it doesn't. But I still think that makes things interesting uh, from the side of the game. And this is like one of those weird things. You know, the teams have played each other in the past. And uh, I think everybody's looking ahead. And we'll talk about the Minnesota and Philly game and kind of what that means and where the money's going to as far as where that over is. And so there is some merit, I feel like, to having an over here. Like you can see the Tennessee Titans, like maybe they turn Josh Allen over, you know, on the road, get Derrick Henry an early touchdown or something like that. If, if the Titans go out to like a 10 point 13 point lead or something like that and buffalo is kind of pushing pushing things on their end this could get interesting where you know the over hits and then maybe you know people who have buffalo tickets with the spread are feeling pretty good about themselves so it's one of those things i would take separately i wouldn't do them hand in hand if i'm taking the tennessee you know 10 i'm trying to lean the under but if i'm just taking you know any lean in this game i do like the over um because there are explosive pieces on both sides that i feel like could really you know be cause for some weird things to happen i think that what you said is correct where if you assume the titans cover that lends itself more towards a lower scoring game than a than a higher score game so i think that what you said makes sense maybe you separate those two or decide which one you feel better about and go that way um or if you want to go if you're looking for like a same game parlay maybe that situation where you take advantage right. of the potential correlation there and take the uh, titans plus 10 and the under 47 and a half. Now, the tough thing with player props for this game is that Gabriel Davis, we don't know yet as of 9.04 a.m. Eastern on uh, Monday, whether he'll play 
I didn't get a good read on the situation in terms of like optimism. It sounds like if I had to guess right now, I'd guess that Gabe Davis probably does not play. So as a result, not a ton of passing props up uh, for the Bills right now. Stephon Diggs does have a total up 75 and a half uh, receiving yards. Dawson Knox, 32 and a half. The Diggs one is a little high. Uh, the Knox one also feels high. So I feel like I can't really get there. Uh, we do have Josh Allen props up as well. Any read for you on the Bills passing game, given the uncertainty around Gabe Davis? Yeah, I'm just going to be uh, all in on, on Stefan Diggs tonight. I mean, the, num- the number is high, but he has yeah. had some some great games in this matchup. I believe he's had a 16-target game um, from Josh Allen and then an 11- or 10-target game. So double-digit targets in two matchups against this team. I feel like he's the catalyst for this offense, especially you know going against this Tennessee defense. Um, it, they're should be so favorable for him to get loose i know that number is kind of always you know daunting but when you look at some of the numbers you know for the slate that we have this two gamer when you're looking at aj brown and and uh um uh justin jefferson's prop line in that then you're like okay like this is reasonable for for stefan Diggs. so i do like the over there and then getting plus money for him to score a touchdown at home i think is just so favorable he's plus 115 at any time touchdown so i like that as well so do you, what's your preferred route for Diggs? Is it both those, uh, both the, the yardage over and the anytime touchdown? His receiving, like his total reception prop, is it six and a half, which is also high, but it is plus 108 on the over. So you have a couple routes. What's your preferred one for Diggs for tonight? Yeah, the, the receptions is interesting too, Jim, because it's like, you know, without Gabriel Davis, I mean, we could tr- probably just expect Steph- it to be the Stefan Diggs show right, right. Um, almost, and he, he's just going to get peppered. So uh, I think that has some merit to it, depending on where the juice is coming in at. But yeah, I'd, I'd be happy parlaying the receiving yards and and the, you know, the touchdown prop um, to, to get it favorable. Um, in that matchup because it's a home matchup against Tennessee, especially if you if you have any leans on the Buffalo side or anything like that at all. I mean, yes, Jamison Crowder and Dawson Knox and Devin Singletary, Josh Allen can always run one. So there, there's chances that, you know, they get in the red zone and it's not favorable for him. But I think yeah. anything between the 20s um, for this guy, he's so explosive and, you know, getting plus money on him is just always nice. Okay, any other props you like in this game? Uh, we got a lot of stuff posted, especially on the Tennessee side. Anything else standing out to you for this one? Yeah, so uh, on the Tennessee side, side especially, um, I'm looking at two things. So Robert Woods, I feel like, is in a decent spot. His his uh, receiving yards total is at 40 and a half, and I think that, you know, uh, like a lot of people and I, I myself included, you know, we tend to just kind of look at the stats of what happened from week one and kind of take that as not gospel, but you know, that right. does stack out in your brain. And Robert Woods wasn't successful um, last week, but you know, the giants defense has actually looked, you know, pretty stout in a Dory Jackson, that corner for them, yes. he shadowed Robert Woods in week one. And th- this, uh, Buffalo team is not going to shadow. I mean, they kind of just sit back, play zone, play, you know, play, very favorable to just bend, don't break defense. Um, so that I think he's in a decent spot there to kind of bounce back, especially if you're liking the Buffalo side of things and think that, you know, they're going to carry this game away and take Derrick Henry out of it. I'm going to like that a lot. And then on the Tennessee side of things, let's look at Ryan Tannehill. Anytime touchdown at plus 650. Um, I do think it's interesting that, you know, Derrick Henry has kind of burned them so many times. And we've seen this time and time again where they get in the red zone. If it's like, you know, two or closer, they fake it out to Henry and, and Tannehill can sometimes take it himself and run and, and just run it himself. He he has rushing upside that people, I think, tend to forget. There's no A.J. Brown there. So if they find themselves in goal to goal situations, just get, you know, rushing quarterbacks are always ones that I look at um, as far as getting value on them in the FanDuel Sportsbook. So anytime touchdown at plus 650, I'll ride with that, too. I think that could be a good spot to look at uh, once it's posted. Oh, actually, it is up. Uh, Tannehill's rushing yardage prop is 10 and a half. Um, that seems yeah. low, um, in part because of what you mentioned with the goal line stuff. But also, this defensive line's probably going to get after him. No Ed Oliver for tonight, right. but like it's still a good defensive line. And that's kind of how you get to a lot of overs for quarterbacks is they're scrambling. You know, they're forced to move their way out of the pocket. Tannehill, obviously a very athletic guy, only two rushes for seven yards uh, last week, but overall he is willing to run at times, especially when there's pressure in his face. So I think that the Tannehill rushing yardage prop over 10 and a half also very intriguing there. I agree with you on Robert Woods. I, I, you were talking about Woods over and I was like, oh yeah, cool. Like, cause like he faced Ettery Jackson last week. And then you said that and I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like Ryan's got all these bases covered. I don't need to worry about that. I can just kind of check out and let him cruise. But I think both those Tannehill, <laughs> 
um, rushing props in general and the Woods over 40 and a half. Both those actually don't let us not forget Robert Woods revenge game. The Bills drafted him. So wow. we can't forget this. No, I didn't. Jim, I didn't think about this. That's, a, all, that's a hand clap. Market. That's a hand clap all day. Revenge alt markets. Narrative. Go crazy. Go crazy. Go crazy. Absolutely. Speaking of Love revenge games, game. let's move to the second game here. The Vikings at the Eagles. Jalen Rager revenge game. Justin Jefferson revenge game because the Eagles passed him over. We can do yeah. whatever we want here with regards to narratives. They are flying all over the board. Eagles two and a half point favorites right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Total is 50 and a half. I want to get your read on this game because both these teams looked really good in week one. So if you had to guess, I think they're both potentially able to sustain what they did. So that's my answer. But which team do you think is more legit, more likely to sustain what they did in week one going forward? Yeah, it, it's it's tough for me because these are two teams that I, I've liked in the NFC, yeah. like outside of the Buccaneers. And I think we talked about them a lot, uh, you know, heading into the season. So Vikings, like I have tickets on them to win the division. Uh, Eagles are the team that I have coming out of the NFC um, to be in the Super Bowl this year. So it's like, I'm going to know, you know, I, I'm kind of hedging my bets here because I'm going to know, you know, uh, what who's who's really for legit and and uh coming to reality here and i do kind of lean the minnesota viking side i mean just with kevin o'connell there be, we we expected this offense to be you know explosive but i think they really have a chance to to shine all season long and just have a favorable schedule from here on out but it's the defensive side of the ball for me too jim uh ed donatel being here uh or being in minnesota for this team, this guy's been great, you know, at all stops. He was in Chicago for a little bit um, in 18 when, you know, Eddie Jackson and Kyle Fuller was showing out. He's been in Denver uh, for, you know, a couple stints and and did really well for those guys, you know, Super Bowl pedigree and things of that nature. Like he's going to do, I think, wonders with, you know, the secondary of Cam Dantzler, Patrick Peterson and uh, Harrison Smith and those guys and just the front seven, too. So I say all that to say. The Eagles side of the ball, too. I mean, I know they got gashed on the run, and I think it's a Dalvin Cook game that we're expecting. But, you know, they're probably looking to rebound defensively as well. They do have some pieces, but I think they're missing Derek Barnett. So I could see this game. You know, I could see why the public's betting the over. But this does kind of scream under to me to a certain extent. Like, I could see just, you know, the lights being on here. We know Kirk Cousins isn't that great um, in prime time. And, I you know, I do think they're going to try and feed Dalvin Cook, get him going. Maybe the pace is a little bit slower. If Hurts can't sustain drives, I think it's just maybe going to be a back-and-forth affair as far as, like, not as bad as what we saw yesterday with Tampa Bay and New Orleans, but uh, just one of those things where you're not, you know, you're looking at these pieces and you're like, this should be more explosive than it is. Uh, so that's kind of my read on it right now. Uh, I forgot the Kirk Cousins primetime narrative uh, because uh, and that frightened me. That's why I said, oh, no, uh, softly is because I have the Vikings uh, money line in this game. It's plus yep. 116 at Fanduel. You can get it longer elsewhere. I've seen plus 123 still out there in, in spots. I would check around, see what you can get there. But even at plus 116, I'm showing value on the Vikings here because I've got them as slight favorites in this game. Uh, my numbers have it as uh, 0.55 points favoring the Vikings. And that is in part because... My numbers are rationally high on the Vikings, as they always are. Uh, and I think that the, the point I want to make is that this is not skepticism around the Eagles. I think the Eagles will be very good. Uh, my numbers do like them as well. I had the over on their win total when it was 8.5. It moved up to 9.5 after some moves. I think that the Eagles are a very good offense, and I think that they're a very good team overall. I do worry a bit about the interior offensive line of Minnesota holding up here against Jordan Davis and the guys uh, the Eagles have along that defensive line. No Derek Barnett, but he was more of a rotational type guy at this point. So I do worry about that aspect of it, but I think the Vikings are a really good football team. And when you look at what they did last week, I don't think that was a huge surprise. I mean, this is not a bet based on what they did in that game because Philadelphia played well too. Uh, we saw Detroit play right. well uh, last week or last night against Washington. So like that Eagles win <laughs> looks better in week one. I think it's just that the Vikings are a good football team. Uh, they've got Justin Jefferson getting scheme touches now. That's pretty fun to watch. Uh, I think that they will better be able to maximize Dak Dalvin Cook when they're not just slamming him. Um, you know, I mean, obviously the Kubiak's do have very good rushing schemes, but from a right. pass to run ratio perspective, I like what they'll be doing more at this point. So 
I like the Vikings money line plus 116. I have bet that. I do like that. I'm fine making that like an official recommendation for this. I, I think that, again, shop around, see what you can get. I do have my concerns because I think that Hurts is pretty solid. I think that A.J. Brown makes yeah. this offense disgusting. I'm a bit worried about the interior offensive line, but Vikings plus 116 is it's uh, it's tough for me to turn down with my, with my numbers having the Vikings being slight favorites in this game. Yeah, no, it's it. I, I mean, Kirk Cousins, you know, the primetime narrative, I just bring that up just because I know a ton of people will be talking about well, is it. it uh, is it the so, sleepy? So we have the sleepy Tom narrative where Tom Brady right. can't stay up for primetime games. Is it sleepy Kirk? Because he's like got the big dad energy. Is he just like, is he like an East Coast dad? Is that is that what this is where he can't stay up for primetime games? Because I'm not a dad, but I can relate. Uh, yeah. But like, do we go with the sleepy Kirk narrative? Is that the dad narrative? What are we doing here? Well, let's phone a friend, call in JJ, and see right. how the East Coast dad uh, is feeling. <laughs> but, uh, but no, I mean it's just prime time, and I, you know, some something about just the lights being on him and it being, you know, an island game. Um, it's you know something. So I do, you know, this would be a huge win for cut for Kirk Cousins on the road. Just kind of what what the writings on the wall for their season to be, but also for Jalen hurts too. I mean, he's been, you know, doubted by, by so many people um, in the industry and, you know, talking heads just, he, you know, all he does is run and, you know, with AJ Brown being there. So, you know, a lot riding on this for both teams. And that's yeah. why I feel like Jim, the under is kind of screaming to me because you, you can see that, that both of these teams will just want to win this game so bad that there'll be so much pressure on both of these offenses. And I think that, you know, we could see maybe a sloppy game or not as explosive as we expect. So you teased this before talking about Stefan Diggs, but the yardage numbers for AJ Brown and Justin, Justin Jefferson are up there. Uh, we got just yeah. Justin Jefferson, 96 and a half uh, receiving yards, his prop for tonight, AJ Brown, 74 and a half. So that's more reasonable. That one I can understand for sure. Any value for you in either of those numbers uh, for Brown or for Jefferson? Yeah, the Jefferson one is tough. Um, yeah, it's it's just tough to see a number like that, and, and yeah. you're thinking, you know, it's like a mental block Green, in your head. Yeah, well, just how Green Bay played, and I mean, if, you know, I don't play, you don't play, Jim, but I think if they're in the room and they're watching film, they're like, we just got to stop this guy, like right. Adam Thielen, KJ Osborne. Dalvin Cook to a certain extent, like we just cannot let this guy beat us. So I, I expect, you know, a very prideful Philly defense to to come out there and really try and contain him as best as they can. Now, you're never going to feel, you know, good about fading, quote unquote, Justin Jefferson. But when we're looking at the FanDuel Sportsbook, I'd rather go to the odds boost with Justin Jefferson to score a touchdown and the Vikings to win at plus 280 if I'm going to get some action on Justin Jefferson because it's, you know, his prop, I think, uh, anytime touchdown is minus 115 or something like that. So um, th that's kind of where I lean. Now, the A.J. Brown one, again, is interesting as well to me, too, because they just faced the secondary or they just faced the a wide receiver core that, you know, has really nothing to it uh, from the right. Green Bay Packers uh, side of things. So I think the Vikings, you know, to a certain extent, have their work cut out for them. But I am interested in, like, the other guys as, as far as Dallas Goddard and Devonta Smith, who was blanked in week one. Um, I think that Jalen Hurts, you know, he's he's never been a guy. And we know now that we've only seen one week with A.J. Brown, but he's not a guy that, like, really – Pepper's one receiver, right? He's been spreading it around pretty much has been his MO. It, maybe that's because he hasn't had an alpha. We'll see. But I mean, these these guys are still studs and I think it's going to be tough for the run game in this matchup. So I am interested in like Devonta Smith's anytime touchdown prop plus 240. Um, AJ Brown, I'd probably lean more his receptions because I could see them using him close to the line of scrimmage, get him out in yeah. space um, rather than his receiving yardage prop. Um, so that's that's kind of where I'm leaning right now. Yeah, the <laughs> sorry, the choked. I was reading the the props. We got this. Um, I choked you uh, up. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> the AJ Brown receptions one is five and a half minus one twenty on the over. That okay. seems pretty fair. I, I think that yeah, what you fair. said makes a lot of sense because the shorter passes are are have higher catch rates, stuff like that. So he doesn't need sixteen targets to get you six uh, receptions there. Uh, Devonte Smith's yardage prop forty two and a half minus one thirteen on the over for him. Any other bets you like uh, in this, uh, this Vikings at Eagles game? Yeah. So you're the, you're the rushing and receiving prop guy. And I, I am kind of high on Dalvin cook. Like I kind of teased at the beginning. Uh, I believe he's 93 and a half right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook, sports book. And that seems fair. 
Um, but I, you know, I think that it could even be more, more explosive than that. I'm looking at Dalvin cook, Th- his anytime touchdown prop absolutely makes no sense at being minus 115. Like it should, it should be a little bit favorable than that. Um, I, I think he's going to get going now. It is a little, it was a little interesting. I think Alexander Madison touched the ball. Uh, he had like 10 touches in week one, which is the most he's had in any game that Dalvin cook has been healthy. Um, so, th- you know, that's going to be something to monitor, but I do like Dalvin cooks props as far as the rushing yards go, receiving yards, go rushing and receiving combined and anytime touchdown. I feel like they just will, will have the chance to get him established here. I know you talked about the front seven for Philly, but F- yeah. Fletcher Cox being a little bit older and just the way that they, you know, defended against, uh, Deandre Swift and Jamal Williams. Like this is Delvin cook. We're talking about coming into your right. home. Uh, this could be a, a very good game for him to get loose. Yeah, in week one, let me check uh, Dalvin's numbers, his usage. Uh, week one, 20 carries, five targets, 108 yards in scrimmage in that game. Uh, like you said, did lose some work late to Madison uh, because that game is out of hand, but a 77% yeah, snap right. rate still for Dalvin. That's pretty good. So yeah. 93 and a half, I actually think that is a that's that is a bit low. So I'm on board with you where potentially buying into that Dalvin Cook over 93 and a half rushing plus receiving. I do want both uh, as opposed to the single market. Um because I do like the way that they use him. Five targets is a pretty good number. So I think that Dalvin is interesting there for sure. 93 and a half, his rushing plus receiving number. So we'll see if the Vikings can pull out this win and try to get us uh, both the Jefferson odds boost and potentially my money line on them. That's all we got here for this double header Monday Night Football. I think we actually have a couple more coming up later on this year. I didn't check, uh, but I'm pretty sure someone said there are multiple. So okay. we get a couple of these uh, two game slates for, for DFS. A lot of good stuff. Ryan, uh, make sure you will follow you on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. I appreciate it. Hopefully things go as well for you tonight as you did on Sunday. And we'll talk to you once again later on this week. Yeah, I can't wait to get after it with you, Jim. Good luck, everybody. Absolutely. Again, Ryan is on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonis. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Good luck to you with your Monday night football bets. Enjoy the games. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to take our first look at NFL week number three. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 